uh, plenty has been said about the uh, draft EIA 2020. Uh, a policy of the Narendra Modi government piloted by Prakash Javdekar in which everything anti-environmental has been tucked in in such legalese that it would make uh, uh, any bureaucrat used to bureaucraties and the ability to confuse, confound and uh, create conflicts, uh, uh, that person will be put to shame because such is the skill with which the draft EIA Amendment 2020 has been uh, formulated. In a broad sense, it also includes every dilution that has been made, actually from the very inception of uh, the EI notification in 1994. Uh, for someone who's been involved in following the evolution of this notification, as well as trying to implement it, I've always felt that the fact that the Ministry of Environment and Forest chose a subordinate law, that is a notification, to exercise one of its most potent powers, which is to extend environmental clearances to projects which have extensive social and environmental damage, or hopefully deny clearance, was piloted through a notification and not through, say, rules. Even, for instance, uh, norm, ordinary normative municipal functions such as solid waste management is uh, governed through the solid waste management rules and hazardous waste is gone to hazardous waste rules and so on, you know. Uh, the idea being that rules are seen as an assistant to implementing the parent law. The parent law, in this case the Environment Protection Act, is extraordinarily progressive for its times, gave enormous powers to the central government through the Ministry of Environment and Forests to ensure that the task of protecting India's environment, human rights, because rights tied to the land to sea, to water, to wetlands, to forests, had suffered. And so the idea of the Environment Protection Act was to try and holistically bring everything together and ensure development did not destroy the chances of the present and future uh, generations to live a life of uh, harmony, a life of uh, equity, a life where we don't steal from the future to live in the present. Those were the type of uh, uh, principles that was the ethos with which the Environmental Protection Act in 1986 had been enacted. So when in 1994 the ministry chose to bring into effect the EIA notification, what it essentially did was to say that we will try and control the way in which this notification is used, the way in which it is implemented and the way in which development across the country is uh, monitored, regulated, and approved. Over time, the EI notification became a very, very potent instrument of corruption. By the time it was 1997, we had managed to improve it somewhat by making uh, public hearings, which had been discretionary, uh, mandatory for all projects. But then started the push from the World Bank, which funded the Ministry of Environment and Forest to reform India's environmental laws under the Environmental Management Capacity Building Program. But what did they come up with? The 2005 draft EIA notification. Uh, what began as a reform exercise with Vajpayee government, uh, which uh, ruled between 99 and 2004, uh, taking uh, power to evolve the draft 2005 notification, was gracefully accepted by UPA1, uh, led by Dr. Manmohan Singh, uh, going forward with it. In fact, during the Vajpayee government, we had the uh, Jaswan Singh-led committee uh, in which the uh, Going Rajan Committee uh, of Investment Reforms uh, was uh, prepared and accepted. Uh, Mr. Jaswan Singh was at that time uh, the External Affairs Ministry and along with Arun Shauri, they monitored the uh, Going Rajan Committee. And Mr. Vajpayee in a cabinet meeting accepted the Goen Rajan committee recommendations and basically that committee said forest and environmental clearances are a bottleneck to India's growth. Now what I meant by growth is uh, economic and financial growth. So 
when you think about the Govindarajan Committee, you should think of it as a watershed moment in India's uh, history, recent history, because it effectively said whatever India had evolved from the 70s, 80s, uh, evolved out of the pain and misery of thousands and thousands who had died uh, in the Bhopal gas tragedy. Millions who had suffered due to displacement, dislocation, devastation of forests by dams, roads, rails, expansion of cities, all of which was comprehended in the environmental laws which evolved in the 80s and 90s. Uh, the Goindrajan committee said, all of that doesn't matter, growth matters. We need to grow fast, and if you want to grow fast, you have to cut down, you have to restrict people's rights, uh, to decide, to participate in decision making relating to the environmental clearances, forest clearances. Now this report was totally accepted in the 2006 uh, National Environmental Policy. It's in fact uh, documented in that. And based on which the draft uh, EIA uh, 2005 notification was uh, confirmed as what is now in praxis, the EIA notification 2006. Between 94 and 2006, at least 25, 30 dilutions had taken place, serious dilutions. They were incorporated into the 2006 and what was worse about the 2006 notification was it created a mess of bureaucratic organizations. Uh, and I was co-author in a book uh, called Green Tapism, uh, punning on red tapism, which bureaucracy is uh, excellent at. Uh, and uh, we predicted the outcomes. And uh, uh, unfortunately for us, all our predictions have come true. Uh, the 2006 notification was systematically diluted because it's a subordinate law. It doesn't have to go to parliament for approval. Rules need to go to parliament for approval. Subordinate laws don't. At best, it has an oversight mechanism with the Parliamentary uh, Committee on Subordinate Legislation, which really is not binding on the government. So every now and then, amendments took place. And if amendments didn't take place, they would issue circulars, uh, orders. I mean, it was mayhem. It was bureaucratic mayhem. So such executive-led legislations unfortunately legislation has to be by the legislatures but here this executive led power was effectively used to legislate out people's rights to participate in decision making uh, legislate out environmental considerations from developmental decision making legislate out social justice from economic decision making and that happened from 2006 to 2019 as soon as Narendra Modi took over as Prime Minister, he set up the TSR Committee on uh, TSR Subramanian Committee uh, to look at six environmental laws and basically said reform them so that they don't come in the way of development. In effect, what he said is beyond Govindrajan's dilution, beyond the 2006 CI notification dilution, beyond the national environmental policy, which is so pro-development that it's not, not even funny. I, to, I mean, it's really funny to call it environmental policy. Now give me something more. That was the first major reform Mr. Modi took. And that committee gave a report in three months' time. They apparently held countrywide hearings. I, I don't know if it's possible. Six major laws. They were Biodiversity Act, Environment Act, uh, Water Act, Air Act, uh, and uh, Forest Conservation Act. And issued a variety of recommendations, which are, if you read now, you'll say, really? I mean, several of us critiqued it. With my colleague uh, Bhargavi, I wrote a critique of uh, the TSR Subramanian Committee. It's on our website, esgindia.org, uh, in which basically we said the principle of utmost good faith that it promoted is a disaster from which India will not recover. India's ecological, social and economic security will be devastated. So if you ask me what is the draft EIA notification 2020, it is all of the TSR Subramanian Committee recommendations plus all the dilutions from 2006 EIA notification packaged into this current draft. That in itself should tell you why you should fundamentally oppose it. Now, what do we have? What do we want? From the very beginning, uh, along with the Coalition for Environmental Justice in India, a group a coalition which ESG helps uh, coordinate, uh, we have been arguing that the power of environmental decision making is a potent power like financial decision making, like economic decision making, and it cannot be allowed to be trammeled, it cannot be allowed to be uh, manipulated, worse, emasculated by a bureaucracy which is so pro-establishment and so pro-industry, yet they call themselves Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. Perhaps they want to cause more climate change. And uh, 
it is uh, this power that has to be taken away if india has to have a chance people of india now and into the future have to have a chance uh, because the principle of utmost good faith in industry overwhelms and destroys precautionary principle polluter pays principle uh, just about every progressive uh, uh, principle the supreme court has uh, invoked through various judgments uh, for the last 2 3 decades is rendered useless because of this one notification i mean people have talked about post facto clearance people have talked about dilution people have talked about removing most of the hazardous and uh, uh, devastating economic activities from the purview of uh, review but even if it was there it's still a weak law what i would argue for is we need a strong law if really we care about this country its future its ecology its environment its people its culture and so on we need a law which is a complete law which is a comprehensive law which gives autonomy to regulatory powers which will work with the local governments and regional governments to ensure that any developmental decision making will be in conform conformance with article 39 of the constitution which says development must take place for everyone's good and not for anybody's any few people's good uh, it has to be in conformance with article 243 zd which says district planning committee and metropolitan planning committees must be integrated into developmental decision making and they in turn must take into consideration natural resource planning as well as environmental conservation such a law should come and we should demand and we should work towards that and once we have that law we should ensure that the way in which our environmental decision making takes place is as per the constitutional dictum the i won't say dictum constitutional uh, guarantee of federated governance of people centered governance of eco centric governance only then india will survive as a country uh, we as people will prosper otherwise it will be a world in which the ambani sadani startas ruyas uh, the infosys people they will be the ones who control politics and administration and they will get what they want because they have the money power uh, they will they will be backed by international financial corporations transnational corporations the amazons the googles uh, just name the banks international banks they love this new notification because for them investment becomes easy now because human rights and environment have been thrown into the dustbin so i hope uh, this uh, this uh, message helps you to realize how serious the threat is to our country due to this one subordinate law the eia draft notification and why it must be defeated thank you and have a nice day